Hello and welcome to Flash Animation Chapter 4, Lesson 4. Now there are three distinct items that we'll be working with today and which you kind of hopefully understand after the fact. The very first one is creating a morphing effect between two objects that you yourself control and create. The second one is morphing between two particular uh, pictures so and it morphs between the two and the last one is actually morphing between two pictures with hints that make it easier to kind of understand how these things change so the very first thing I want to do is I'm opening FL4 underscore 6 which I have right there I'm going to click on frame 30 which is right there I want to insert and timeline keyframe. So I'm going to insert timeline keyframe. I'm going to click the selection tool so I make sure my selection tool is chosen. It says move the, po uh, the pointer over the top of the car near the right side until it changes to an arc pointer. And what that is, is if I take my mouse pointer over here, you notice there's a little square. As I take it to the very top right here, notice it doesn't turn into what I want it to. There we go, because I had it selected. So I done select it. Now as I turn it to the top right, you'll see that right there it turns into that arc. Now if I left click and hold in that arc and I drag it up, I'm actually changing the size of what it is, or excuse me, what it looks like. Now, since that happens between one, notice number one looks like this, number 30 looks like this. If I'm right in between at 15 and I insert and I want to do a shape tween, insert a shape tween, what goes on there now is if I run this, it actually morphs the shape between the two positions, which is kind of neat. So that's our shape tween. Now we move on to FL4 underscore 7, and what's going to happen here is, is I'm going to morph between two pictures and not change the shape. So I want to click on frame 40, which is right there, and I'm going to insert timeline blank keyframe. So that's going to allow me to uh, only see one object at a time. And I'm going to edit multiple frames so I can actually see, and the edit multiple frames button looks like that. And so I'm, that allows me to see that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to display the library panel, and I'm on uh, frame 40. You'll notice frame 1 is still displayed. And I want to take the G Antique Car Top Down library item, and I want to move it to directly on top of the other item, which is right here. And then I can actually use this to kind of do in between the items. There we go. Um, then make sure the Gantic car, uh, car top down object is selected and I want to do modify and I want to do break apart. So now I've got it selected and I, my multiple frames are open and I want to insert shape between. So click anywhere between 1 and 40. So I'm going to click 20 and that's on step 9 and I want to insert timeline. Um, oops. I want to insert shape tween, my mistake. So here's my type 40, and I should be able to insert. Now, you notice my shape tween isn't selected. We're in frame feature. Right sure. oh, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's selected, and then I want to insert shape tween. So the way this should work, let's take a look. Here's my number one, and it now morphs between the two particular she sheeps shapes. Alright, so I finished that and it's morphs into the second car. And then the second part on Flash 4-34 is actually changing it to a uh, uh, easing, meaning that it slows it down and or speeds it up, uh, depending. And I've had some hard luck getting a hold of the ease elements, but just take a look at that as well. So the next thing I want to do is I want to open up FL4 underscore A and play the movie and notice how the L morphs into a Z. So they've already inserted that shape morph, but it's very difficult to see what it's actually morphing into. So in order to allow that to make it easier to occur, I'm going to click on frame one, and I'm going to, and I'm this is hint, and I'm going to modify shape, add shape hint. So modify shape, now add shape hint. So that allows me to do this. Now what I'm going to do with the shape hint is I'm going to move it straight up here. Then what's going to happen is I'm going to click frame 30 of the hints layer and the shape hints are stacked on top of each other. Oh, and I want, sorry, my mistake. And I want to do that a few times in 
this layer here. So what I want to do is I want to add a second and third shape layer. So I want to do modify shape. So modify shape, add shape hinge. So there's my B shape. Modify shape, add shape hint. There's my C hint. Now what I want to do is I want to go to frame 30, what I tried to do before, and now I've got three shape hints. And what I want to do is, as I'm, let's see, intersect top of drive shape hints to match figure 54, and drive the shape hint to the location shown in figure 52, pieces. ah! So in this one, I want to actually move the shape hint to C, and B, so that's what this part looks like. And this is frame one. Oh, I've forgotten that again. This is frame one. This is my shape hint. Now what I want to do is I click on frame 30, and there's all my shape hints at well. And I want to click C, B, and A. So there's my shape hints as well. And so what goes on there is now I can easily see how it's morphing. So I have a better idea of what it's going to morph into. And it controls the morphing of those objects to make it a little bit easier to work with. So as we ran across our items here, we have a morph between shapes that I specifically just changed the original shape and uh, inserted a shape tween. I have a morph between objects where I can easily see this uh, change between those two. And I can add my ease to slow that down or speed it up as appropriate. And I have a morph between shapes that allows me to, since I added the hints, that makes it a little bit easier to control. All right, so this concludes Flash Chapter 4, Lesson 4, Working with Shape Tweens and Animations. If you have any particular questions in any way, shape, or form, uh, please forward them to me. Otherwise, continue on. Make sure to create these items, and good luck to you. You're doing a good job so far. Thank you for your time.